Welcome everybody. This is the Flexible Doctor of Pharmacy program, the University of British Columbia's Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences. And I have the honor and privilege of serving as the director of this program. My name is Patricia Gerber. I also serve as director of degree programs for pharmacists here in the faculty. And I'm really excited to have this opportunity to tell you some details about the program along with I'm Carol Kwan, and I'll be helping Patricia here uh, with the admissions information. So I'll be discussing that and walking you through the application process. So let's let's get started. Uh, we're going to do a, a run through all the various aspects of the program and, and hopefully answer your very many questions. Uh, if you have any questions beyond what we cover today, uh, at the very end, we'll give you information on how to reach us. To begin with, uh, once again, I want to welcome you to the Flexible Doctor of Pharmacy program. We like to call it Flex PharmD. So Doctor of Pharmacy meaning the PharmD degree and Flexible, we shorten it to Flex. So you'll hear us talk about the Flex PharmD program. This is a program that launched in 2018. And uh, to give you a little bit of an overview of the program, we call it part-time because it's intended for working pharmacists who will complete it over the course of a few years. And by that, we mean anywhere between three and five years, you do have a maximum of six years to complete it. Now you see the word undergraduate there in that the university views this degree as comparable to the entry to practice PharmD degree that uh, is uh, open in a uh, in a four-year mode to um, our 200 students a year, et cetera, who are entering the profession. Now we understand and fully appreciate that you're not entering the profession, you're working pharmacists. So in the eyes of the approval process of the university, it is an undergraduate program because it meets the outcomes of the entry to practice PharmD program. However, we designed the curriculum, all the courses and the work that you do in this program to really tackle what we consider that window between what you already trained for and learn in practice, um, kind of upping that game to the standards of a PharmD. We call it a competency-based curriculum. What that means is we aim to impart on you knowledge and skills where you will have the ability to show that you can do things, not just know things. Competency meaning by the end of this program, you will be able to do things. You will have acquired skills. We do that through didactic coursework that's primarily delivered online, with the exception of a required one week period that's delivered in person at UBC. Uh, which is also a great opportunity to meet your program leadership, your instructors, and the peers that are going to be in your cohort um, going through the same program as you. The rest of the entire curriculum is delivered as 34 credits online. There are also required 26 weeks of experiential rotations or clerkships or practicums, and we'll talk in more detail about those. What is really unique and exciting about this program for you is that we recognize the experiences that you bring to this program and we offer what's called a PLAR or prior learning assessment and recognition aspect of this program that uh, can grant you credit for the things that you have done prior to entering this program. And that can be in the form of granting you credit for certain coursework and or granting you credit for uh, the rotations uh, or, or that's what we mean by the experiential requirements. Up to 50% of the coursework can be PLARD. And again, we'll go through that in more detail in a moment. Let's talk a little bit about if you are enrolling in this program, what does the curriculum look like? Um, to begin with, I want to give you a sense of why would you want to do this degree? What could this degree do for you? You are already a competent working pharmacist. What this degree can do for you is enhance your practice and widen the scope of what you could attain as possible career avenues and goals. 
So with this degree, you would have the opportunity to open doors to perhaps new settings of the practice of pharmacy, new opportunities within specialized areas that you did not have prior knowledge in before, opportunities um, within academia, opportunities within uh, potentially uh, the government or regulatory bodies, uh, inpatient, outpatient pharmacy. In other words, it's a degree that would open doors for you beyond your accomplishments to date. And um, it would it would enhance your knowledge and skills in a wide breadth of uh, areas of the practice of pharmacy, from the therapeutics of um, medication therapy expertise that you would gain to hot contemporary issues in the practice of pharmacy to leadership and management and um, pharmacokinetics, pharmacogenomics, all sorts of things that perhaps in your day-to-day -day practice, um, although exemplary skills and knowledge you apply to and what you do every day, you would not have those skills. So we invite you to think about the opportunity of joining us at the UBC FlexForMD program to enhance your practice, to widen your opportunities, and to have a good time in the process. What does the curriculum look like? For the most part, the order in which you complete the various courses uh, is flexible. There are a few bits that you must complete before doing any experiential. Um, courses. And so the critical appraisal course, that's an evidence appraisal of the pharmacotherapeutics literature, the pharmacokinetics and pharmacogenomics course, which really teaches you about clinical scenarios and how to monitor patients on uh, drugs that we follow uh, pharmacokinetics and pharmacogenomics for, the patient assessment skills, which has you understanding uh, the, the evaluation from head to toe of body systems and how they relate to drug therapy, and the first of nine therapeutics courses. Those are all required for you to complete prior to launching to any experiential courses. But beyond that, the order in which you do things is up to you. So we have a series of eight therapeutic courses that focus on various areas in body systems. We'll walk through that in a moment. Um, but those are listed, listed there on the screen to the right, Pharmacotherapeutics 2 to 9, again with the prior number 1 being part of the prereqs. And there's a practice management course, there's the experiential courses, and a PharmD seminar course. Again, all of it online with the exception, of course, of the experiential, and as, as we said earlier, the one week required in person at UBC. The program and your journey through the program culminates with a comprehensive examination that again is not available until you complete all the required uh, courses and, and, and uh, aspects of the FlexPharmD program. So let's dive into the therapeutics, um, nine courses that we talked about uh, a couple of moments ago. As I mentioned, we have the critical appraisal course, the patient assessment course, kinetics and genomics, and then we dive into these um, nine in total, but one being foundations and therapeutics, eight uh, following different kinetics, uh, pardon me, different therapeutics courses that focus on body systems, uh, beginning with respirology, dermatology, cardiovascular, infectious diseases, neurology, psychiatry, as you see them all listed there. Now again, the order in which you take these is up to you, with the exception of the foundations one, and uh, you have the ability to apply for the PLAR, the Prior Learning Assessment and Recognition that we talked about, uh, and we'll go into detail in a moment for any of those. So for example, if you have been practicing in the area of infectious diseases for the last year or two, or however much uh, experience you might have accumulated in that area, you are um, able to apply for credit so that you do not have to take that particular course. And then to wrap up the curriculum, the pharmacy management seminar, and I mentioned already the comprehensive um, exam. Diving into the experiential courses, there are a total of six, 
And as you can see, they're all uh, one month long with the exception of what we call 496 as the course number, which is a six week experiential that can be either in a patient care or non-patient care environment. There's a total of 26 then uh, weeks of experiential comprised of some outpatient, some inpatient, some primary care, uh, and then some uh, selected, meaning more in an elective format, all of them for six credits. And as we said earlier, all of them um, you can PLAR out of, uh, you can apply for PLAR for recognition for your prior experience. A few things uh, that come up as, as common questions we thought we would include. What's the difference between E2P, which you might see throughout our pharmacy um, uh, website here at the faculty. E2P stands for Entry to Practice. It's just been known as a, as a friendly way for us to call the four-year degree um, Entry to Practice PharmD. So what's the difference between that and the grad PharmD and the Flex PharmD program. It seems like uh, there's a little bit of uh, potential confusion as to all these different programs. I am going to start with the grad PharmD program. The grad PharmD pro program, also known as post baccalaureate program, also known as um, uh, uh, post grad PharmD program. It had all sorts of names. This was a program that existed for. Uh, many, many years, starting in 1991 here at the faculty, for those who wanted to advance the profession. It was the only PharmD type of degree that existed here at the faculty and for the most part throughout the country, for those with a Bachelor of Science degree as the entry degree in pharmacy. That program closed its doors forever in 2018 and it made sense that it did because in 2015 we launched the E2P or Entry to Practice PharmD degree as the Entry to the Profession degree, much like uh, just about all the other nine schools of pharmacy across the country. And so the Entry to Practice or E2P degree replaced the Bachelor of Science in Pharmacy degree and um, uh, change the entry degree to the profession to the PharmD. Therefore, we began to offer this Flex PharmD program for those working pharmacists such as yourselves who may wish to attain the PharmD credential uh, because you would have had a BSc or Bachelor of Science degree as your entry degree. So I hope that makes sense as far as how these three programs distinguish um, themselves from each other. And again, to clarify, the graduate PharmD program is no longer available. So we now have two PharmD programs, the Entry to Practice PharmD and the Flex PharmD for working pharmacists. A common question that we get uh, is around how much time commitment would I need to consider for a given online course? And it's obviously difficult to say with certainty for a number of reasons. A student might find a particular course easier, a particular course harder, depending on the complexity, depending on their experience, um, and, and depending on their experience with online learning as well. We do um, strongly encourage and, and enhance the opportunities for an online community to be formed amongst the students in the program and the students going through any particular course at any time, but essentially it's a little bit of a learning curve as far as engaging in an online course. So for some, perhaps they've done this before and they might find that um, somewhat easier. For others, it, it takes a little bit of learning in the first week um, how to navigate and, and self-direct to, to navigate through an online course. But we like to say about 10 hours or so a week between readings, assignments, and of course that flows. There are busier times, there are less busy times, and for some students they would take one course at a time, other students like to take two, two courses at a time, again depending on their workload, depending on their personal lives. The question then comes, uh, is it possible to want to get this done with quickly and, and do it all full time? And, and the answer to that question is that we truly designed it for working pharmacists to continue to work. 
So it is intended to be completed on a part-time basis. Now, how part-time that is, is up to you. As long as it's completed within six years, you can take the summer off or you can take a winter off and take two courses here, one course over there and design your own journey in that way. I'd like to jump in here and, and comment on um, just the time commitment that you can expect for most of our students who are currently enrolled in the program. They typically take one or two courses, um, juggling that with their full time work and other life commitments. Uh, so you can expect, as you see on the slide, approximately 10 to 12 hours per week dedicated to the lecture reviews, assignments, online discussions per course. And so if you're considering, you know, how many courses should I take in this program, um, as Patricia mentioned, it varies. You can design the, your course loads each term, depending on what your needs are. Um, but that just gives you a framework of how much time out of your week and your schedule you can dedicate to the program. Thank you, Carol. The difference between the course curriculum, the, the course aspect of the curriculum and the experiential aspect of the curriculum is that although we've been talking about the part-time nature of this program, when it comes to the experiential rotations, the rotations can only be offered full-time. So for those four-week chunks, and in one case, one six-week chunk, those cannot be completed part-time. Now again, uh, with what frequency you complete a rotation is up to you, but that four-week commitment cannot be broken up to make it part-time. A, a very fair rotation to ask, a very fair question to ask rather is, can I complete any of my rotations at my work site where I currently practice? And this is a fair question to ask in particular because uh, the, the, the flexibility of the program uh, may allow that to be an option. It's something that would be discussed between you and our Office of Experiential Education. We have to make sure that the site and the uh, work that you'll be doing meets our standards, but um, it is certainly an option for you, for you to consider. I want to speak a little bit about this PLAR thing that we've been talking about, the Prior Learning Assessment and Recognition. This, once again, is the aspect of our flex for md program that gives you credit for uh, things you have achieved prior to entering this program. And not to be too academic, but to start with, a little bit of a distinction in the form of a definition is important here in that we're not talking about transfer credit. Transfer credit relates to uh, getting credit from one institution and applying it to another. That's not what this is. What we have in the FlexFarmD program is an opportunity for you to apply to have the learning that you have acquired, either formally through courses or certifications or informally through your experiences as a working pharmacist, to the various aspects of our curriculum. So to dive into that a little bit further, what we mean by prior learning, we can dissect into three different aspects. Formal learning through a program that you took, for example, you completed a residency before, or you completed several courses uh, at another institution before, that would constitute formal learning. Uh, and you can apply for those to, uh, for the program to um, review and um, decide whether you can have credit to the flex md program for those. What we mean by non-formal learning is um, anything that you've received as training at your place of work, things like workshops at the institution where you work, that's considered non-formal learning. And again, that is gain here. You can apply for PLAR for those things. And the last um, third of this is the informal learning. And those are things that are what you've learned and acquired as knowledge and skills as a working pharmacist. You have practiced for uh, several years in a particular area, um, in a particular sector, uh, with a particular uh, patient population, 
And so you, um, that again constitutes fair game for applying for PLAR. When you apply for PLAR is at any time after you've been successfully admitted into the program. So you, you can't apply before you are welcomed into the program. You first have to go through the admission process that Carol's gonna walk us through in a moment, and then you can decide uh, if and what you would like to apply for. Depending on uh, what you're applying for, there are fees associated with the process of us reviewing your materials that you have to submit uh, so that we determine whether that is sufficient evidence to grant you the credit that you are requesting. And the reason why there's a fee for that is because, as you can imagine, it requires uh, significant resources and time for us to go through the materials and the evidence that you are requested to provide so that we can assess um, the, the fairness of granting you credit for that. Uh, I invite you to visit our website for more details. There's a specific area that you can click on about the PLAR process. And what can you PLAR out of? The critical appraisal course, the kinetics and genomics course, the practice management course, and the experiential rotations, I should say, and or the experiential rotations. Yeah, and the, the real benefit of uh, getting the PLAR credit is, um, I think, quite obvious. You don't have to take those courses, so it saves you a lot of time in the program, which is really great. Um, so now we'll just switch gears here, uh, talk a little bit about the admission requirements, go through the application process, uh, you know, what's required of you when you are submitting an application, and then some final considerations before you make that decision to apply to FlexPharmD. And of course, if at any point uh, you need to revisit some of that information, definitely visit our website. We've got all of the details about the admission requirements and the application steps there. So I highly recommend um, just scrolling through those pages and finding all the details. So the uh, admission requirements for the program, uh, in order to be considered for admission to FlexPharmD, applicants must meet all of the requirements that are listed on this slide. So the applicants, uh, you do need to hold either current registration as a pharmacist in BC, or be eligible for registration with the College of Pharmacists of British Columbia. So what that speaks to is, um, you know, for those who may have passed the qualifying examination with the Pharmacy Examining Board of Canada, but perhaps you may not be currently registered in British Columbia, maybe you are currently practicing uh, in good standing in another province or territory where we have uh, a reciprocal uh, transfer agreement with. So there are, um, you know, different ways uh, that you can meet this registration requirement. And if you have any questions about your eligibility, you can definitely contact the College of Pharmacists of BC to get more clarification on that, if that is a, a question for you. Also, the FlexPharmD program is an academic program, so you do have to meet academic requirements. Applicants are required to meet a minimum 65% on the last 30 credits of undergraduate coursework. And uh, for most of our applicants, what this means is usually uh, from their previous Bachelor of Pharmacy degree. Um, so we're looking back to your undergraduate program. What this would not include would be any graduate level coursework that you may have done afterwards. Uh, or any kind of, um, you know, maybe certificate programs or coursework that are not eligible for transfer, transfer credit uh, at UBC for undergraduate coursework. So we are looking at those undergraduate um, courses and that's something that uh, you might need to look back and uh, make sure that you've met that requirement uh, depending on how long it's been for you. And then one last thing, um, there is a minimum English language proficiency requirement that is required for all students who are entering a UBC program. And uh, what this is, you know, for most of our applicants, they usually meet this requirement uh, through 
getting their degree at a um, Canadian institution for which English is the primary language of instruction or perhaps in the US. But if you've uh, studied somewhere else where English isn't a principal language uh, in your country, then you may be um, uh, able to meet this requirement by submitting a English language exam um, and meeting certain minimum scores that are outlined on UBC's um, English language admission standard. So uh, there are nine ways of um, meeting this and we won't go through all of those in detail, but some of the most um, you know, common ways, as I mentioned, uh, having a degree uh, from Canada or um, also submitting an English language score such as your uh, TOEFL is a common one um, or an IELTS exam and those have to be taken within the last two years. Just as a, in addition to that, a, a reminder that these are not requirements of our flex for mb program, nor of our faculty, those are requirements of this university. Mm -hmm. Exactly, thank you. So uh, as far as the uh, application goes, we do have one admission um, cycle, I guess you could call it. Uh, so all applicants would um, go through the same admission timeline, uh, but we have two intakes. We have intakes for uh, September and January. So when you are submitting an application, you are applying for both, but you can indicate uh, start preference. So we will um, do our best to consider uh, your preferences, but keep in mind that you do need to um, meet the deadlines for uh, both intakes for that year. So our admission process starts in September and goes all the way into April. And uh, I will walk you through the different stages of the admission process. And so keep these deadlines in mind as we go through all of those steps. So the application to the FlexFarmD program uh, is available online. It is an online application form and it typically opens in September one year prior to when you plan on starting. Uh, so it's good to plan in advance and keep that in mind. Uh, for anybody who is new to UBC, you can access the online application through the undergraduate admissions website, which is you.ubc.ca. And anybody who uh, have attended UBC in the past or happen to be current UBC students, you can access the application through the UBC Student Service Center. And uh, this may require you to retrieve your old CWL login credentials or create a new CWL, depending on how long it's been for you. Uh, but if you have any questions about that, you can definitely contact us and we can hopefully help you troubleshoot any of those issues. Um, and then once you submit the uh, online application, uh, I call this you know, the first step of the online application. Um, you fill out this form, it will um, ask you to provide biographical information, your academic uh, history, and also for you to select the program that you wish to apply to. So in your case, uh, you would select the Flexible Doctor Pharmacy program. And then you submit this online application and the admissions office will receive it and go through your application and then they'll let you know what your next steps are. So uh, once you've done that, uh, you will have access to the sec second step, which is the supplemental application form. And this is the online form that you can access through your Student Service Center. And it is where you'll write your personal statement and it'll ask you a few questions, including um, what your start turn preference is. So this is the second part of the online application. Uh, you can actually start this while you're waiting for the admissions office to get back to you and let you know what documents you need to submit. But uh, once you've received that email from admissions, um, they will also enable the document upload function so that you can provide your additional supporting documents. And these are um, uh, proof of your pharmacist registration, uh, a copy of your CV, and additional supporting documents. 
So these documents would be um, essentially things that will enhance your overall supplemental application. They would demonstrate your achievements, uh, any of your professional activities, and uh, give us you know, some insight into your practice. So what we usually recommend is uh, you know, preparing these documents well in advance, uh, even before you're able to upload them into your online application, just so that you have time to think about what documents you're providing, how it would enhance your application, uh, support the statements that you've made in your personal statement. And you also have um, up to 20 pages and so it's uh, important to you know, think about what you're submitting um, and be, be um, mindful of uh, the documents that you want the committee to review. And then the, the last piece of documentation uh, would be your academic transcripts. So these will be uh, all post-secondary transcripts uh, from all institutions that you've attended. If you've attended UBC, you don't have to submit your UBC transcripts because the admissions office will have access to your academic records. But if you've attended any other institution, we would still need to see those documents. So uh, contacting former institutions to arrange for those to be sent directly to the UBC admissions office in advance uh, it is recommended as well. And then um, other documents that the admissions office might need would be proof of English language proficiency, such as the IELTS or a, a TOEFL exam, if that's applicable to you. Um, keep in mind that you know, all these documents should be directed to the admissions office. Uh, they're uh, the evaluators, um, so they're the ones who would need to review your academic uh, documents. And all of these supplemental documents uh, your supplemental application form, the documents that you're uploading to your application, and your academic transcripts are all due uh, December 15th, which is uh, two weeks after the first online application deadline, which was December 1st. Now, uh, once we've received all of your documents, there would be a period where uh, the admissions committee would review all of our applications, um, will you know, assess uh, the candidates, and we would shortlist those uh, who we want to invite for an interview. So the final stage of the admission process are the admission interviews. Uh, they're really intended to uh, assess uh, an applicant's suitability for the program, uh, for us to get you to know you a little bit better after we've reviewed your package. And these interviews will take place in March, um, extending into April at times uh, of the year just prior to when um, you plan on starting. So at this point, uh, you know, the interviews are, they can be done in person or through video conference if you're not lo located in the um, greater Vancouver area. We have that option for those who are not local and it is conducted as a panel style interview. So very similar to what you would expect if you're um, you know, attending a job interview. Uh, the, those who are on the committee, you know, it consists of faculty members, pharmacists, staff who are involved in the FlexFarmD program. So we have a, a wide group of people who are reviewing all of our applicants from all different angles. We appreciate that being in front of a panel in an interview setting is uh, a little bit intimidating and, and a little bit nerve-wracking and so we do our best to try to make you feel comfortable and, and, um, and make you feel like it's an opportunity for us to get to know you in as much as it is an opportunity for you to get to know us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And these interviews too, um, you'll have the opportunity to ask us questions about the program just to, for you to have a better understanding of um, how this program will suit, you know, your needs and, um, you know, your goals as well. Now, uh, lastly, oh, I should also mention that, um, you know, once the interviews are concluded, the admissions committee again will uh, review uh, the applicants and start making admission decisions. 
And we typically try to communicate those emission decisions um, around the end of April. So that's when we start um, uh, sending those offers out to our applicants. Now, uh, the last piece uh, for you to consider before applying is um, tuition fees. So we want to let you know what you can expect to help you with your planning process. Uh, keep in mind that the information on this slide is for those who are planning on entering for the 2020 uh, winter session. And uh, these are reviewed and approved by the Board of Governors every academic year. So they are subject to change and, and their typical increases, usually around 2%. Uh, but if you want current information about uh, application and program fees, you can find that on the UBC academic calendar. For this uh, winter 2020 year, uh, the admission application fee is $219. That's broken up into uh, the first UBC application fee and then the FlexBard D supplemental application fee. And if uh, you are given an admission offer, you are required to um, pay a, a non-refundable acceptance deposit of $2,000. And if you enroll into the program, then that $2,000 can be applied as credit towards your program fee. As far as the program fee goes, uh, the way this program works, we understand that uh, you know students have um, quite a bit of flexibility to take, you know, three years, five years to complete the program. But the entire program fee is around forty-one thousand dollars this year. Again, subject to changes uh, in the future, and it's paid in six equal installments over the first two years of the program. So whether it takes you three years or five years, you will have the program fee paid off within the first two years, which is really nice. Don't have anything to worry about afterwards. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the practice fee um, of a little over $1,000, um, this will be charged in year one and year two of the program. So that gives you an idea of what you can expect. I invite you to think about the uh, importance of tuition and fees, of course, as you reflect on your um, ability, um, availability, willingness, and um, to, to take on this program. I also invite you to think about the, uh, the whole package of applying to the UBC Flexible PharmD program and what it entails. Uh, of course, there is a price for getting the PharmD degree. We take pride in what we do here, and we uh, we deliver a curriculum that is uh, exemplary, and we deliver a curriculum by award-winning faculty who um, take this so seriously, and you're learning so to heart that it's hard to put a number to to tuition to that. And so as you consider your options, as you consider your interest and willingness and feasibility to join us here in the FlexFarmD program, I invite you to think about um, the, the caliber of the program that you're joining if you're joining the UBC Flexible FlexibleFarmD program. Mm -hmm. And to add to that, um, you know, when you're joining the FlexFarmD program, you are a student at UBC, so you do benefit from a lot of the resources uh, that we have here on campus. And um, a really great resource, especially on the topic of tuition and fees, is uh, the UBC Enrollment Services Advisors. Um, we have advisors who are assigned to students that will be there for you from start to finish. And if you have any questions or you need some guidance to help you navigate, you know, things like uh, student finances, um, they're there to support you as well. And of course, you know, those of us in the FlexFarmD program are here as well. Um, so that just brings us to the end of our presentation. Um, and if at any point, you know, you do have more questions for us regarding, you know, the curriculum, uh, PLAR credit, experiential uh, learning, um, admissions, you're welcome to contact the FlexFarmD program. And our email address here is farmsci.flexfarmd at ubc.ca.
And with that, I'd like to uh, wrap up by saying that as director of this program, I am honored to serve in the role. I am grateful for you for your interest in, in us and exploring us and feel free to continue to do so and should you end up enrolled in this program we'd be thrilled to have you and we would look forward to learning alongside with you thank you for your interest